I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and in case you're for the first time on this channel, normally it is dedicated to the board game Carcassonne, um, but today I'm making a different kind of video and a big exception, and we're gonna try play some Azul. So here are some reasons for this. I picked up the game a couple of months ago, and um, it went pretty well. I learned pretty quickly, and then in a month time, I uh, climbed to the top three players on Board Game Arena. Now I dropped a little bit. Now I'm uh, top 20, uh, around top 20, but still, as you may see, I'm above 700 ELO points, which is sort of the threshold for Master on Board Game Arena. And I thought that we could just play a random game of Azul, Preferably with somebody who's like not too weak, not too strong, and then I'll explain my moves and my opponent's moves uh, along the way. And if you're interested in the game of Azul, oh look at that, we got paired up very quickly. Yeah, then hopefully you can learn something. Uh, and you know, if you're normally here just for my Carcassonne content, then don't worry, I'm not turning this into an Azul channel. It's sort of like a like a one-off. Uh, alrighty, so, well, that, that was quick, so we're not getting the starting advantage, and I already, like, I'm not a huge fan of my opponent's move, because if you can, you should start, um, building a column normally, that's how you typically win game, you know, if you can build a column pretty early, because a, a complete column can give you seven points at the end of the game, well, now, um, they are starting to build the rightmost column, but then ideally you want to be l building one of the middle columns because what's going to happen in future rounds, right? In future rounds, th if, after they complete this column, they will have only one more option for lucrative point scoring. Whereas if I complete this one, I will have always option on both sides and typically sort of that's way how you win games. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly what to do in my next move, but I think I already start seeing some ideas. So, um, you want to look at how many of each tile there are. Uh, so they are, well, let's say two, uh, so there's six reds, four blues, three whites, three yellows, uh, four blacks. And uh, it's usually hard to calculate, like, in which exact order we're going to take them, but we know that they are going to end up in the middle eventually. So with that, I'm operating that I have a shot of completing these three golds. Um, these reds, these are quite decent. Okay, so long story short, basically, I'm picking between one of these tiles. Normally, um, the starting player advantage is actually a very big advantage. Uh, and unless there's a very good reason not to pick the starting playing tile on your first move, I should do so. So I'm going to start building this column because I can get I can get a comfortable blue over here. Uh, I can get at least two yellows, maybe. Okay, so obviously we're not going to take the two reds now because then this will create a sequence of four blues. So I think now we should uh, we should also take the kind of elements that both our opponents need. So we're going to take the blues first. We're going to let them take the blacks. Um, yeah, then they have to take the blues themselves. They have to. They can't let me complete this column. Well, <laughs> or they can. Sometimes your opponent helps you, but like you, you, you can't. You, you, you can't do that. Like normally, you have to watch what your opponent is doing. Um, you have to really watch what your opponent is doing. And now also, I will have a very strong move. So maybe they're not that experienced. They kind of see that there's a lot of reds. Maybe they're hoping that they can complete, uh, that they can win by completing a color. But typically that will be not enough. Even if they manage to complete a color, one, two, three, four, five, these five red spots are so disjointed that they're going to take their those this 10 point bonus at the end for the complete reds. But then... 
it will be just those 10 points. Whereas when I complete a column, I will take only seven points. But in addition, with all these tiles, one, two, three, four, five, this will be like 15 additional points. And now also there is another, I think, quite a strong move that I'm going to play. So now um, my opponent has taken away all the reds from me, which I guess was the idea. But check this out. This is where the calculation comes in. So I'm going to take these two golds. And then this will create the three whites and the three blacks. And with that, I will actually be able to uh, complete my middle row, at least with something. So even though it's a bit disjointed, it's, it's quite nice to complete four rows at the start. And also, I didn't really have any uh, better options. Interesting. So, of course, I'll just, I'll just get my one point. I think this... Yeah, it's, it's fine. So, I don't really have much of an advantage here. Well, I do now, because this move was definitely a mistake. They had to throw it into the discard pile. So here's the thing. You don't want to block your rows. Like, you, it's losing one point is, is not as much as they're going to lose later when they have all their rows blocked. Um, because you see now it's gonna stay here for uh, for another round. You could say that yeah, they got a little bit unlucky that there's not enough golds. But if they're trying to build a column, like these two won't match, so that won't be exactly possible. Now what else? We see we have a lot of blacks, and we can still decide which column to build. Which could, we could go for the whites, but now I'm thinking we should kind of go one of for these blacks instead, because there's just so many of those. Uh, so I like, I like this move. Here's, and here's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to put, so the second row is going to be filled. This is going to stay here for a couple of rounds. Then I think we just continue building our column still. So actually, we might even complete it. Uh huh. You know, I'm gonna try be greedy. I'm just gonna arrange everything according to the column, and I will probably be ending. Uh, I will end up completing a lot of this stuff. Okay, good, 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 good. So now I think. Which one should I take? Mm. So reds, he goes there. Ah, I know. I do this. Yes, exactly. And then uh, I force, I force this move, and they get one into their floor line. Then for me, this move is forced. Because, well, I, I have to complete a row. And then finally, I just get one point over here, uh, which sort of equals this one point, And then they just throw uh, this in, into the discard pile. So we actually got, I think, a quite a profitable turn. There's still enough blacks or enough whites for me to complete this. Uh... Maybe not this round. So what else? They're, they're most likely they could take these blues. They might try to build the outer column, actually. In which case, if they do that, I'm probably going to just take... I'm going to let them do that. I'm going to take one of the whites. Because I want to have the first round tile. Ooh, uh, I think that's a mistake, because they should be really filling it with the golds. With the, with the yellows, because they, they will get more points. So now we're going to take this, and we're pretty much guaranteed to finish this row. Mm hmm yeah, yeah, fair enough. Now it's a bit of a difficult question where to go. Uh, we don't have many options for our row over here. And we do want to complete it eventually. So I think we have to go here. We can always complete the bottom column later, provided there is a sufficient number of black tiles. I wasn't 
um, I wasn't tracking. Sorry, I keep calling them tiles because I'm a Carcassonne player. <laughs> They're, I guess, stones? What was that? Okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Can we make them hurt? I don't think so. They're still gonna take this gold stone. <laughs> stone. <laughs> why, are there, why are there stones? Um, what's happening to the top row? We could take one of the blacks. We could... Or we could take the yellow and force the move. So we take the yellow, they take the other yellow. Uh, what else? What do we do? We take this, they take the black, we take some reds, yeah. All right, let's 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 force a move. Actually, but what does this do for me? I really want to be filling it with the red, right? Okay, I think I think now I know. Now I know. Now they do the gold, and then I take a red. But I mean, or or I don't do, know anything. Oh, okay. So th that was a mistake, actually. Like they. They took this because now uh, a standard tactic in Azul is making sure that your opponent has an odd number, that on your opponent's turn there's an odd uh, number of moves remaining. I'm going to take this blue and then what they are going to be remaining three yellows and four reds and one black. So I will, I will have one move, and my opponent will have two moves. And as a result, they kind of need to take the golds now, because otherwise I take them. And then I'm sort of threatening to um, complete a row uh, to actually get a lot, a lot of points. Uh, wait, 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 what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot about these, huh? I forgot about these. Hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, normally this would work, but I forgot I actually need to complete the top row. Hmm. Man, what if I do this anyway? Okay, yeah, we're, we're gonna yeah we're gonna have to endure a couple of tiles in the floor line, I guess. Uh, now we have to take this, and then we have to make a decision whether we block our third row just to save ourselves a couple of points. Um, hmm. I think it could be worth doing that because. I wasn't tracking tiles, but there should be still a sizable number of reds remaining. And yeah, we're gonna do this. So that was a bit of a mis miscalculation for me, because I just, that wasn't a miscalculation, just like f forgot about my top row for some reason. Um, well, look at that. There is our one red. Although, ooh, oh no, there are two reds. Okay, perfect. So instead, I can actually make something more productive uh so the priority like when you're starting around you want to prioritize those tiles that both you and your opponent need uh with those tiles that only you need you can always wait so here these are the two blues they're trying to complete a column i don't want to let them do that i'm gonna go here and they will not be able to complete a column this round no matter what Now it's 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 a question what they're gonna do. Yeah, that's that's good. They're trying to build up the second row or the first one. I don't know. Yeah, the first one's probably better actually. So hmm, not ab absolutely not clear what I should do here. They do need uh, the white. They do need the gold. But so do I. Maybe somehow these four golds can converge. And then we can complete this row. Okay, so let's just start by just completing our top row. 
Because then all these tiles could end up like in my in my floor line or something. Uh, then we should take care of our reds first. Yeah, they just keep building, building, building. Aha! Uh -huh, now I see. So I think now we take. Uh, wait, wait. Which one do we take though? So if, uh, if this is just like a calculate, if purely calculation moment, how can we get those in? If I take those, there's two threes. He takes this. I take the red. Yeah. Well, okay. I take this. He takes the three of those. I take the red. And then he's forced to dump some in the floor line. If 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 I take this black. He takes, let's say, uh, or they take the two whites. Then I can take the gold, then they take this. Oh, let, 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 let's do this, let's do this. I think this is correct. Simply because this asymmetry, because I can take away this... Um... Oh, like that, huh? Somehow I didn't, I didn't think that they could do that, which they obviously can. Ah. Uh, I still have to proceed with this play. And the reason for that is uh that I I I I I still need for them to finish the the play. Actually, look at that. Can I get a complete color? Uh, well, if anything, I should play this move regardless of the question, and I think the answer is yes. Well, no, because my opponents will get um, the starting tile next round, but given... So I wasn't tracking tiles, but we didn't have really rich floor lines, I, so there's one black over here. Um, my opponent barely has any blacks, so most of them have to be in the deck. When you can't keep um, the exact track of i wanted to say tiles but they're stones i'm still gonna call them tiles like the carcass on in me um when you can't take track of the well, okay stones precisely then at least you can use rough counts you can kind of just look, look at the board see which ones are already there and uh, you know then determine uh then determine uh at least approximate counts for them so there should be like three blacks remaining, I think. Two. Well, close enough. Oh, we're not gonna able to complete their stuff, although they are having a bit of a dilemma. Dilemma, 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 dilemma here. So they need. It's it's, it's a good question. So. Aha! Uh Aha! -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was a good move from them, because they know I need this stuff too. Actually, it will be very hard for me to get this row. But since I'm 12 points ahead, I think I should do this now. Check this out. Ah. Now I'm going to complete my top row. And I also, I'm going to make them pay a little bit more for completing the bottom row. So they will be forced to take their first round thingy. Then I want to be connecting those. Then uh, I think for my next move. Okay, so if I take the reds, uh, they take the two blacks. Then I take the two reds. Then they take the two whites to prevent me. Then I take. Then I take a blue, and then they're forced to. And then they're forced to discard three yellows. Yeah, okay. So basically, I don't think I can like complete much stuff. But I can force uh, a lot of their tiles on the, f on the floor line, basically. Just have a look. Yeah, so that goes there. At least we force them to pay this one extra tile. Oh, man, I'm... Oh. Okay, never mind the reds. It's only like... It's only one point or whatever. Okay, so I, I take the white. I, I, I just hallucinate a little bit. I thought that was a good calculation. I take the white. They take the white. 
Then I take the red, then I take the blue, then I take the gold. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So they absolutely have to take the white in order to prevent me from scoring. Oh, look at that. So that was a clearly a mistake. Like they were trying, so they were trying to block and they were trying to, pre to prevent me from scoring, but they lose up more points themselves. So they lose seven points. And I was threatening to take uh, seven points with the gold. So it's, it doesn't, this move doesn't do anything. So instead with just this one tile, I'm going to take five points for the row, three, uh, three points for the, uh, f f f f uh, three points for the mini column and two bonus points at the end for the completed row. Um, yeah, of course, now sort of they force some tiles into my floor line. So yeah, the last round, like typically the end of the round is just like math, just calculation. You go here, I go here, I go here. At the start of the round, you normally just use certain principles like rough counts. And also you can anticipate which tile will go where. Uh, so you see, for example, with this move, okay, I thought there were three black tiles remaining. That was a bit imprecise. There were two black tiles remaining. Um, even though I did not end up com getting my complete color, I did not need that to win. What I did do, however, I had a threat of completing my color. And so they were forced to prioritize the blacks so they had to take the blacks and then i was able to do like other other things uh already yeah we end up getting a few rating points so to sum up again uh at the start of the round first of all just estimate have a look how many are there of each tile of, of each color try to anticipate how they could be neatly arranged along columns or rows in a way that gives you more points and then also look at your opponent's board obviously if they are trying to score something big you can sacrifice a point just to prevent them from doing so because it's a two-player game so it's a zero-sum game essentially whether uh, your opponent gets points or you losing points it's pretty much the same thing and also you gaining points or your opponent losing points it's also pretty much the same thing, except for the first round where it pretty much doesn't matter how many points you lose because you can't get below zero much. Uh, in this game, this wasn't one of those games, but basically in some games in the first round, you can get your floor line really full just if you, I don't know, are in a position to prevent your opponent from completing the second uh the second row, I guess, like within a round, this little two point thingy. I'm not familiar with Azul terminology, actually, so I guess we might just make it up from scratch. Uh, yeah, and what else? You want to be taking the, the first player tile, even though it costs one point, typically it's more than justified. And if anything, one point is probably not fully enough compensation for that, at least in two players azul which in my opinion is really the only version of azul that matters um yeah that's pretty much it and then of course some calculation uh, how you can make your um opponents have an odd number of moves and yourself you want to have an even number of moves most of the times sometimes the opposite is true but you can try to anticipate how the tiles are going to end up in the middle and it takes some time to get used to it and try to um to visualize this as well well the good news also if you know you're new to azul and you've been playing uh other board games then board game skills are actually quite transferable so i think i managed to uh get quite high in azul in just a month because of previous Carcassonne experience. So it also has this zero sum aspect. It also requires visualization. And interestingly, there's also many ways how you can win. And there are many analogies that can be made between Carcassonne and Azul. So for example, this was like a very classic game 
where we both ended ha up having the same number of big features. Uh, I have the top two lines completed. They have lines. Yes, that's the terminology. They have the top two lines. I have a column. They have a column. And the thing that mattered that gave me that 15 points advantage is that along the way, we were just able to continue to complete squares a bit more organically. So we ended up just getting more points within each individual round because we were placing our tiles closer to already completed tiles, I guess, if you could say that. But but you get, you know, if, if your yellow is already there, then you place blue nearby and you get more points if you do that earlier, if you do that sooner than later. And then another thing what we did... Um, Let's just have a look at the game stats. So yeah, oh, points lost in floor line. So eight versus 21. I think we're able to um, make it so that they um, were, were losing a, li a, a lot of points. And if anything, that's actually our main source of victory because you see points gained with place tiles, only two points advantage and a 13 points advantage over here. So 13 points out of 15 uh, came out from our opponent losing uh, on the floor line. And with that probably will come my final tip is that without necessity, uh, don't block your rows. There was one moment where um, my opponent took a yellow stone. I think it was in the first round and they put the, that right over here, even though it didn't match their bottom column. And they ended up stuck with that for a bunch of rounds, I think for two rounds at least. And when that happens, you can't really put anything in that row. And if you have, and then you're quickly run out of rows where you can uh, put stuff so that stuff has to go in the floor line. In the first and sometimes even in second round is okay because I don't know if you have two points and you had get minus eight points, you can't get minus six in this game, so you still get zero. But starting from round three, the floor line can really hurt you. Alrighty, that's going to be uh, enough for today. Um, I would normally say, you know, please like and subscribe. Well, I'm gonna say that, yeah, please, you know, Click the like button, actually helps a lot with the algorithm, especially if you learn something from the video. About subscribing, it's normally it's a channel dedicated to competitive Carcassonne. So if, you've in if you're interested in competitive Carcassonne, then please do subscribe. I don't think I can promise many new Azul videos, but I'll be happy to give any additional tips and um, answer any questions that you might have about this video in the comments. Thank you much for watching. Why did I say that? I said, thank you much for watching. I don't know. It's a bit late. My English grammar doesn't work. My grammar in any language doesn't work now. If you're new to this channel, you'll see I, I tend to speak weirdly a lot. Uh, it's, it's not on purpose. I can't help it. The thing that I meant to say was, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I did it again. Never mind. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you soon.